Right guys, so I just got back from the, uh, the Regal Cinemas. Let's talk about Top Gun 4DX. I've never been to a 4DX theater before. If you don't know what a 4DX theater is, I'll leave a link down below in the video's description to their own YouTube channel. But in a nutshell, what a 4DX theater is, it's almost like those 3D virtual reality type of roller coaster rides that you would go at Universal Studios or maybe Six Flags. I think the nearest thing that I could think about that I could equate it to is that, that Harry Potter ride over at Universal Studios where the seats actually move. It's not a real roller coaster, but it feels like you're in a roller coaster because what you're seeing on screen correlates to what you're feeling in the seat movement. So it's kind of like the fourth dimension of what you're watching on screen. And also along with the 40X theater, you're getting some different sensory overload of excitement coming in different different ways. Let's say, let's say you're feeling air blowing at you. If you're flying in an airplane, they have these gigantic fans that are coming from the upper left and right hand side of the theater that kind of blow on the audience. There's smells. So on the back of each seat, I believe on the back of each seat, there are these little, little vents that can expel either air or odors into the air. So you could smell like you're outside in the jungle or something like that. Behind the seats, there are these two little nubs that blast air out behind your head. So if you are in the airplane and it's taken off, you could feel the afterburner or whatever, just blowing air behind your head. Or maybe there's a dinosaur behind your head. So that's pretty cool. On the bottom of the seats, there's this little white thing that, I don't know if it blows air, but it kind of wiggles around. You could feel it brushing against your back leg. And there's some, uh, there's these little actuators in the seat that vibrate the bottom of the chair. So if something blows up, the bottom of the chair will vibrate very much kind of like a butt kicker or a Croson seat actuator. There's also actuators on the back of the seat. Like say this is the actual seat here. There's little actuators that will push against your back. When you're watching Tom Cruise fall on the ground, it'll feel like you're falling on the ground because those actuators will push against your back. Fog, there's fog and smoke. So if you're watching the, uh, the airplanes take off, you'll see the, uh, the, jet, the jet turbines on the back of the planes billow smoke. There's also some flashing, some flashing lights that would also flash. So if, so if an airplane is flying and they're shooting some missiles at you, you'll see the lights flashing in the upper corners where it'll mimic what it looks like when a, mis when a missile is shooting at you. So what did I get from watching Top Gun? It was pretty cool. It's pretty expensive, I'm not gonna lie. It is $26.50 for a ticket pre-tax. You're gonna have to pay tax on that. So it rounds out to about $27. Why I chose Top Gun? Because it just kind of made sense because you are in a cockpit of this airplane and the seats are gonna move. So it's gonna, I figured it would feel like you're sitting in a cop cockpit of an airplane. And that's exactly what it felt like when I was watching the airplane scenes. So we'll talk about the good, stuff's real, the good stuff really quick. So when the actors are going through this canyon, if you've seen the movie, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So during the training session, they're flying through, um, I think it's called Star Wars Canyon. If you watch the movie, I'm not gonna review the movie, but the movie feels very much kind of like a Star Wars movie, like episode four, New Hope. Anyways, when they're flying through the canyon and they're kind of, you can feel the jet turbine taking off. So when they're taking off, the seat will kind of like jerk you back. If they're making a left turn, you'll, the, the seat will, will tilt to the left, it'll tilt to the right, um, it'll vibrate, you, it'll gently move. It'll just kind of like rock back and forth at times as well to make it feel like you're floating in the air, like you're actually in an airplane. I will say that if you have maybe back problems or neck problems, the movie, depending on what you're watching, the, the chair can jerk pretty violently. So be wary of that. And one thing that I thought was really weird was that because the seats do move around a lot, they can jerk around a lot. There, there are no lap belts or seat belts in the seats. So I could see maybe a child, if they weren't sitting square against the seat with their back against the seat, that if, there's, if you're leaning forward, if you're a little kid, I could feel these little kids being thrown out of the seat if they're not securely placed in the chair. The other aspect I thought was very immersive was the fact that the seats do vibrate. There's actuators under the seat. So if there's an explosion, you will feel the bottom of your seat vibrate. It'll rock, it'll rumble a little bit. It can either rumble violently, very hard, or very gently, just to give you a sensation of maybe footsteps. 
Other things that I thought were interesting as well were the flashing lights in the top corners, like I had mentioned earlier. So if there is a plane over to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some flashing lights when they're shooting rockets or guns fire or something like that. So you'll, you'll see a flashing light. So that, that was kind of cool. At the same time, kind of weird because it's, you're seeing it on screen, but then at the corner of your eye, you're seeing a light flash as well. So that's a little bit weird. So as far as a holistic experience, I really thought that this movie, I could see where airplane movies, maybe race car movies like Ford v Ferrari, it would really benefit from the extra action and movement that you would get from these seats. So it really does place you into the cockpit of the airplane. So the negative things, I think, there's some things that kind of take you out of the movie. Sometimes um, there's parts where characters are walking and you can feel the seat rumbling under your butt. Like, why do I need to feel Tom Cruise's footsteps? I don't think I don't think that makes sense. There's, I think there's a part where he's opening and closing the locker or something like that towards the beginning of the movie. And you can feel the seat vibrate when he closes the locker or maybe he puts a drink on the table or something. But things like that are a little bit weird. Like why, why would I have to feel my body shaking because he's taking a footstep? Or why does my seat have to wave around like it's floating in midair if it's just a random scene of these guys sitting at the bar or something? Things like that are a little bit out of place that kind of take you out of the movie a bit. Other things that I noticed, I don't know if this was just the theater that I went to, but the way that this, for, this particular 4DX theater was set up and this theater was in New Rochelle. It was a Regal Cinemas in New Rochelle, New York. So there, are, in, the, in this theater, there's only seats in front of the theater screens, in the theater screen. So it's like a straight row, right in front of this, right in front of the screen that goes all the way back. There are no wing seats or no off angle seats that kind of extend outside of the, the radius of the screen. So it's just like a single row straight down from front to back. And it's a, it's a really long theater as well. So if you are in the front row, or maybe towards the middle, middle front, probably the most ideal place to be in this theater. I don't know if all the 4DX theaters are the same, but that would give you the most immersion visually and also match up to what you're feeling on the, on the seats, in the seats. If you're sitting a bit back, further back, as you can see probably in this video, that if you're sitting maybe like towards the rear of the theater that the screen is so small that it almost feels like I'm sitting in my living room looking at a 75, 85 inch television set. And the thing that makes it even smaller is that they have a 16 by nine screen in the theater. And then when it goes to letterbox, like this movie's in letterbox, I think it's in 239, you get the letterboxing. So now the image is even smaller. I could see if you are in the front seat, it'd be more engaging, but for where I was sitting, didn't really match up well. So that's one thing. Another thing that I thought really kind of took me out of the, this 40 experience, I'm almost positive either they didn't have subwoofers or they had very small subwoofers, or maybe they turned the bass down or maybe they're just using the bass out of the main speakers. I know there's not a lot of bass coming out of the surround speakers because they're small. I felt like all the bass was coming out of the front, near the front of the screen. But I think, I don't know if this is true for all 4DX theaters, but I feel that because having actuators on your seat like, like butt kickers, you can kind of offset having smaller subwoofers, at least in your house. In your house, it makes sense because you can have a small subwoofer because you're in such a small enclosed space you can feel, you can kind of hear the bass in your house, whereas the actuator in the seats would also augment that. So it feels like you have a bigger sense of bass in your house. Whereas in a theater, since you're in a big auditorium, if you're lacking that sensation of actual bass, you can hear the bass, you can feel bass kind of like vibrating the air in the auditorium. You don't get that. I didn't get that in this particular theater. I could feel the seat rumble where I would feel like, where I felt, with the Crosins when I had it. So I could feel that there is base, that there would be bass in the air, but only through my body. I didn't actually hear it. I just felt it. This just felt like a center channel and there was nothing. It was dead silence. This theater was so quiet. I could hear everybody's fingers going into their Skittles boxes or reaching and grabbing some popcorn. It was so quiet. And there was one scene during the movie where is the beach scene that, if you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about, or if you saw the commercial, there's a beach scene where the, where the guys are playing football. There's that One Republic song playing, zero bass during this whole part. They're, you know, they're, they're doing their little moves, their little dance moves, and this, this, this scene had zero emotion to it. There was zero rhythm to this, to this scene. It was just not there because there was no bass. 
I could feel the little bass notes in my seat, but there was no bass. Actually, I could not hear any bass, especially during all the action scenes. We're not gonna give them bass. We can cut back on money. We can use smaller subwoofer, subwoofer smaller speakers. We'll just give them the, the tactile experience rather than the auditory experience. So that's one thing, that's probably the main thing that I felt that kind of distracted me from the movie. Another thing that was a little bit distracting was there are those wind effects that kind of shoot at you from above your head, up in the upper corners. When the jets are about to take off, you can feel the gust of wind or when the fighter planes are flying through the air. You can feel, you can hear the fans blowing. I think because the fans are so close to us, to the audience, that you can actually, you know, if you're sitting to an, next to an actual fan, you can hear the fan blowing. I think maybe if they had some kind of, some kind of like air registers in the air and they had the fans in a different room blowing, you just felt the air blowing. So that was a little bit distracting as well. Oh, hold on. There's also this, there's also this one time where the plane is kind of banking to the left but the chair is banking to the right. So I don't know if they messed up on that part, but visually and tactile wise, if the plane is moving to the left, I wanna feel like my seat is moving this way. I don't wanna feel like I'm moving this way while the plane is moving that way. But the good thing about all these distractions is that if you're going into this movie and maybe you, you pre-gamed a little bit, you had a couple of drinks beforehand, or maybe you're going to a movie that you don't want to see and somebody drug you to a movie, there's a pretty low chance you're going to fall asleep because the chairs move around so much during the movie that you're not going to fall asleep unless you just like to be rocked to sleep like a baby because there's so much motion going on, hard to go to sleep. Usually when I go to a movie that I've seen twice, the second time I'm probably going to fall asleep. This one I stayed awake the entire time because it just moves you around in the chair so much that it's not going to happen. All in all, my experience at a 4DX theater, I thought, it was, I thought I think it's a positive one. It's a, it's a bit expensive. I think maximum I would probably pay maybe like 20 bucks, maybe between like 15 to 20 bucks. I think it's worth it. Um, I don't think it's gonna work for every movie. So is it worth the money? I mean, I guess it's all relevant. I mean, I guess it's up to you. If you wanna feel like you're in a roller coaster ride, uh, 100%, it's a cool experience. I feel like if you're a movie fan, you should go to one of these theaters and check it out because you owe it to yourself, why not? But if you've been there multiple times before, I could see where you could be distracted from full enjoyment of the movie because sometimes movement doesn't seem like it would happen all the time. So I could see where people would hate it. If you have back problems, neck problems, probably don't go. But if you've never been to one, definitely go check one out. But those are my thoughts on the 4DX theater. Have you guys been to one? Have you guys seen Top Gun in 4DX? Have you guys seen anything in 4DX? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you again in the next video.